All right, you're getting there. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. All right, talking about Jesus, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation. Here it is. Verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Do you know who that's talking about? That's talking about Jesus. And that word firstborn, that first the beginning in this sense is not that he was the first one born because it tells us right here that everything, whether in earth or under the earth, was created by him. Jesus was never created. Come on, say amen. amen. And if you're not sure about it, go back to John chapter 1. And I want to make sure you get this point because those, those words in English can trip us up if we don't know their meanings, original meanings. In chapter 1 and verse 1 of John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. And truth. If you understand that, say amen. Yes. So Jesus, who is the amen, Jesus, who is the faith and who faithful and true witness, the one who was before everything, he makes an assessment of the church. He says, I know your works and you're neither hot nor cold. In other words, you know, sometimes we have an opinion of people and our opinion is just our perspective. You know, people will come to you and say, when I first met you, I thought you were mean. Well, that's because you didn't know me. Maybe you were being, I don't know. But point B, a lot of times people have an impression of you that's shaded or colored by somebody they met similar to you, who walked like you, but it's not you. And when they finally get to know you, they understand that what they first thought about you was not true. But Jesus is the first one over creation. He's the original. When he makes an assessment, it's right. That's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Yeah. So when Jesus says of the Laodicean church, you're neither hot nor cold, that is a true perspective. But what Jesus is trying to point out to them is that in verse 18, 17, he says, because you say I am rich. He said, I know that you're not rich, but you think you're rich. Uh -oh. See, sometimes our perspective of other people is wrong, but I'm here to tell you tonight, sometimes our perspective about ourselves is wrong. Sometimes we think we're better than we are. He says, you think you're rich because your bank account is full. You think you're rich because you live on the other side of the train tracks. You think you're rich because you drive a Tesla or another German engineered vehicle. He says, you think you're rich. And then he says, let me tell you what else you think. You have need of nothing. But he says, let me tell you about yourself. You don't know that really you are wretched and miserable and poor. And the Greek for this word poor is like the destitute of the destitute. The beggar on the side of the road without changes of clothing. He, you are poor and you are blind and you are naked. He says, let me tell you about your true condition. Now y'all got all this money and you're self-sufficient and you're arrogant. He says, but let me tell you as the amen, as the faithful and true witness, as the one who has always been and who has always seen everything. I'm telling you about yourself. The truth is that you're not what you think you are. His assessment. But let me give you his advice. His advice is found in verse 18. He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold tried in the fire. And look what he says, so that you may be rich. You think you're rich, but you're not. He says, but let me give you some advice. You want to be rich? I'm going to tell you how you can be, be rich. Y'all want to know how you can be rich? Some of y'all stay, some of y'all stay, stand up light at night buying Carlton Sheets as programs trying to get rich. Uh, that's not how you're going to be rich. You, 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 every time that a new program comes to town, they tell you they're going to meet at some hotel somewhere. You pay your fee and you get down there because you think that that's how you're going to get rich. But I'm going to tell you, that's not how you're going to get rich. Let me tell you how to get rich. First Peter 
chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. He says, come buy of me gold tried in the fire. What in the world are you saying that I need to buy from you, Jesus? Are you there yet? Yep. Yeah. Hebrews and then James. And then you're going to bump into 1 Peter. And then you'll be right there. 1 Peter and go down to chapter 1. And go down to verse 7. It sounds like Sister Gidry's got it. I want you to go back to verse 6 and then do 7. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various, what? Temptations. Temptations. That word means trials, difficulties. Huh? And then verse 7 says that the, what? That the trial or the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, this is what I want you to buy from me. You think you're rich, but I'm going to make you rich. And I'll tell you how I'll make you rich. Ask me for more faith. And you know what happens when you ask God for more faith? You know how he makes you grow more faith? Lord have mercy. He makes you grow more faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So he stretches you a little bit. Isn't that what verse 6 said? He said the genuineness of your faith. It's grieved by various temptations, various trials. He says, come buy from me. Gold tried in the fire. He said, what, what else do you need? You think you're rich, but you're not rich. And you're increased with goods. You know people who are increased with goods. You ever go into a person's house who's increased with goods? Don't say yes. Mm. But they got all, got clothes, and the clothes still have tags on them. They're increased with goods. Mm. They, they, they got stuff that they haven't even worn. They bought it some time ago, years ago. They just have the ability to walk in to Neiman Marcus or Saks Fifth Avenue and say, I like that, and they buy it. And then it hangs in their closet, and they never wear it. Increase with goods. He says, you don't need another outfit from one of those high-end stores. I'll tell you what you need to buy from me. It's, it's right here in the text. You still with me in the text, right? All right. Bold, gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed. I got plenty of clothes, but you don't need those clothes will not clothe you on the day of judgment. You, you need something else to cover you. And you do know that in the ancient Near East, that if you were naked, that was that was not just being naked; it was shame. That when when they would conquer other peoples, they would strip them naked and leave their buttocks out as shame. Jesus says, "I don't want you to be ashamed on the day of of Christ." So He says, "What I need you to do is to buy white raiment." Now, what is white raiment, y'all? Y'all remember what it is? It is the righteousness of the saints. Turn to Revelation chapter 19. Got all my notes up here. I've been preaching without my notes, so I can't find my place. That's all right. We'll, we'll get there. Revelation chapter 19. And go down to verse 8. Are you there yet? Y'all don't mind using the word of God. Line upon line, right? He says, and to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen. And here it is, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Now you and I know that ain't, we ain't got no righteousness, right? How many, how, how, many, how many of you in here are righteous in your own strength? Okay, you're wise enough to not put your hand up on that. I, I need to put on the righteousness of Christ. So that Romans 3 says there's none righteous, no, not one. And yet, when I put on the righteousness of Christ, when the Father looks at me, he doesn't see me. And when Christ was dying on the cross on Friday, he didn't see Jesus. The Bible says the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, had never lusted, had never coveted, had never killed, had never lied when the father saw him because he took my place.